So glad you guys decided to join us here today. Really grateful that you chose some of your Sunday to spend, uh, yeah, spend time with us. Uh, we're in part two of the series called Out of the Shallows, and I want to tell you about something that happened to me when I was very young. It was uh, very, very exciting. I was 10 years old, 10 years old, and uh, something happened. I, many of you know I grew up on a farm, uh, but uh, we built a dam. Not a wall, we built a dam, okay? And that might not sound exciting to you. It was very exciting for a 10-year-old, okay? Because the bulldozers and the digger loaders and all this machinery moved onto the farm. They drove up the hill into the valley, and they started building a massive dam wall. It was absolutely incredible. And uh, we got to watch this from afar. It was, uh, you know, really fun. And eventually, they started filling up, and, and we were able to, uh, you know, go swim in that dam. We even went, and there was a dam nearby that was closing down, and we went to go catch some bass in that and put bass in that uh, dam, and we were able to go fish there. So it was a great, great experience as a kid having this dam on a farm and being able to go fish and swim whenever we wanted to. It was really, really great. But like every dam, on the one side, there was the shallow side where, you know, there was a little bit of an overflow in case it got a little full. There was a little spot where it would go over. And on the other side was kind of the deep end. Uh, the valley that the dam was built in had kind of a hill that came down the one side, and it was really just like a clay hill. And so it went straight down on the far side. Um, some of you may remember playing clay lutz as a kid. You know, you put a little bit of clay on a stick and you throw it at your friend. Hurts a lot, yeah? Uh, we used to play that a lot as well. So that was, you know, just a great experience for us to be able to grow up. But uh, come a couple of years later, uh, I was about 13. We, we were just becoming teenagers. And a group of us decided, hey, maybe it's time we go and jump off the hill, the cliff on the other side, okay? So uh, we, we kind of, a group of us, we, we walked across the, the, the dam wall. We climbed up the hill, got into position stood on the edge of the cliff, and the, the water was three meters below us, and, and we're standing there, and you thought what I was thinking that day as well, if you've ever tried one of these things, man, this is a bad idea, right? Uh, spurred on by my friends, I jumped uh, off the edge and uh, dived in, and I plunged into the water. I went feet first, not hands first. I wasn't that crazy, but uh, dived in there, and it was kind of like one of those iconic moments, you know, the music's playing in the background, you're watching it on film, it didn't happen like that, but in my head, that's how it went, because I remember it like it was yesterday, because it was kind of like this, this iconic moment that I experienced in my childhood, where I decided, hey, I'm going to step out of what I'm used to. I'm used to swimming on the other side, and, you know, uh, you know having some fun on the shallow end, but I, I, I went on the other side, and, and dove in the deep end, and I, I don't think we swam at the shallow end anymore, because it was just so much fun on the other side, diving and jumping off that wall. Uh, but, I mean, you, you celebrate in your own kids as well, like when your kids trust you and they jump, right, or they jump into the deep end for the first time, or maybe you've experienced this as, a, as an adult as well, or, or as a child, you, you dove off a jumping board, you know, diving board, maybe you, you jumped off a lake, maybe you, you, you jumped off, uh, off a pier somewhere, and, and it was exciting, right? It was kind of like one of those iconic moments. But what's true about that is, is, is it continues through life, that there are times when we need to move from the shallow end, we need to move to the deep end to experience something. And I think if you spoke to people who've gone from the shallow end all the way to the deep end, a lot of them would say they're grateful for that experience. They, they would even maybe say, hey, they were scary, but I would never go back. Nobody, once they've experienced the deep end, not many people, I would say almost nobody, wants to go back to the shallow end because they've experienced so much more on the other side. As, as uh, Khaled said, Chris kicked off the series last week. He introduced us to these four categories and really kind of set up the series with, with uh, hey, maybe we find ourselves in one of these categories. And the series really is for some of these, these guys, curious skeptic, you know, you kind of, you believe, but you kind of on the outside, you've got some doubts, you're trying to figure it all out, right? You, you poking and, and sort of seeing what's going on, you're wondering if this thing, is it really real? You, you're sort of wondering what's going on there. Maybe you're a hungry novice, you're like the new Christian, right? And all you want to do is grow, grow, grow. You can't get enough books, you can't get enough sermons, you can't get enough church, you're just loving it, Right? Uh, another one, restless veteran. You've been doing this for a while, right? You, you've been experiencing church. You've been experiencing Christianity for quite some time. And, and maybe you're in a rut. Maybe you're at a point in life where you're wondering, is, is there really more to experiencing Christianity, to, to being a follower of Jesus? The one group that we said it's not really for is this group at the bottom here, happy campers. Uh, happy campers, you know, you, you just, you, you're okay. You're kind of satisfied. You don't want to go anywhere. You, you're just right where you are right now. You're happy. Uh, and we hope through this series that you would kind of begin to find a dissatisfaction with where you are right now, that you would kind of be like, hey, I, I, I'm not meant to stay here, that God is calling me into something else, and it's far greater than what I might experience and what I might think is going on either. We're having some uh, technical issues after load shedding, which is a load of fun, isn't it? 
Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been an interesting week. We even had an electrician here trying to sort out our generator. So hopefully next time it happens, we'll be okay. So we'll just keep going. As I said, these are the four groups that are, um, uh, we kind of, the series is going for. And that last group, the Happy Campus, we really want them to be able to experience uh, some kind of dissatisfaction because we, we want them to lean into what God is calling them into as well. And when you look at this, this group and you, you kind of think about, hey, I, I need to move somewhere. I, you think about, hey, we're moving from the shallows to the deep end. A lot of us end up thinking, well, it's the church's role, right? Hey, you man up there with a the microphone, that's your job, isn't it? But as we looked at last week, the author of Hebrews, uh, we, we don't necessarily know who that is, but the author of Hebrews says to us, hey, uh, unless you step up and, and step out of your comfort zone and step into the role that God has given to you and God has called you into, uh, hey, you, you just, you're just going to get in the way of yourself. Like you are going to be the lid to experiencing what God has for you. In fact, no amount of church, even though that's a good thing, no amount of sermons, even though those are good, no amount of worship songs, even though those are good, will take us to where God wants us to go because we are getting in the way of ourselves. So last week, Chris uh, introduced us to one of the principles. We're going to unpack one principle every week. And he introduced us to one principle that happened to do with us starting to eat solid food, right? He talked about this idea, hey, we need to feed ourselves. We need to become self-feeders. That uh, We need to, at some point, put down the bottle of milk and pick up the fork and start eating solid food, right? We need to be able to do that for ourselves. And we need to experience life through that as well. That we're actually doing some things for ourselves that are feeding ourselves, that we're able to get some nourishment as it relates to our Christianity. In fact, we invited all of you into, uh, to do a 21 Days of Deep. Uh, those of you, there are 40 of you that have signed up for 21 Days of Deep. Simply, we send an email to you every morning, and uh, you're able to unpack a piece of Scripture uh, and uh, observe and, and you know, really think about what's going on in there and maybe pray about something that jumped out at you in that. And we want you to write those things down because we think that would be able to make a really good habit for you as well. And if you haven't jumped on, maybe you kind of sign up for the first one, your week got away with you and you got a little busy. Hey, we'd love for you to just jump in back with us. Uh, I, I'm hearing some great stories about people who are unpacking this as a good habit to start forming. And the way you do that is you head on over to southpoint.site. Uh, on your browser, uh, on your mobile phone, in your browser, you can head over to southpoint.site and you can sign up under 21 Days of Deep and we'll send you an email tomorrow morning and uh, you can jump in on what we're experiencing as a church together, which is really, really exciting. Now, I need to tell you about something, and I'm so glad you're in, in, interested in it. You're not really, but you're going to listen to me anyway, so that's just where you are. Uh, I'm experiencing something in my life which uh, I think a lot of guys my age are experiencing, uh, especially in my stage of life, and, and it's something that is, uh, it's just something we deal with, really, and, and some of it's a choice, some of it's not, but, uh, you know, it's summertime at the moment, and one of the things a lot of Cape Tonians love to do is go to the beach. I certainly enjoy going to the beach. We, we enjoy going to the pool, Right. But there, there's something that makes me a little nervous, and, and men that are my age and, and stage of life, we, we get a little nervous about going to the pool and going to the beach. It, it's, you know, a little bit of anxiety, um, but we kind of get over it as it goes, and, and it's this. We, we, we're a little concerned about the dad bod, <laughs> right? Now, if you don't know what that is, I brought a definition for you, okay? So a dad bod is the type of physique a man earns. Notice he earns it. Okay? He earns it when the increasing pressures of work life, married life, and especially fatherhood no longer allow him the time or the drive to maintain a hard toned figure. You know, a dad bod is kind of more mudslide than mountain, right? It's a bit more soft serve than sorbet, you know? It's a little bit more mashed potato than skinny fries. You know, it's built for comfort, really. The dad bod is built for comfort. And we don't necessarily get the time. I mean, I, I made a conscious decision a couple of years ago, hey, I could play sport because I love playing sport. Um, but I wanted to spend time with my kids as they grow up. And so, you know, instead of spending three days a week, and there's nothing wrong with that, but for me, that was a decision I made. I didn't want to go and spend time um, playing sport when I could, you know, spend time with my kids, come home from work and spend time with my kids. That was a decision I made years ago. And, and as a result, I'm, I don't think I'm all the way a dad bod, okay? I, I think I'm kind of in between, but, you know. You're never, you're never that far away from dad bod, you know? It's just one of those bad business trips where you just eat greasy food all the time, and you're there, you know? Like, it's just a bad week at work, and you're just getting stuff from the cafe or the, you know, the little diner around the corner. Like, it's just going to happen. You, you're not that far off, right? And I know some of you are in your 20s, and you're like, that is impossible, right? You're, like, sniggering at me like that's never going to happen to me at all. I just want to say to you, just wait, okay? <laughs> you just wait. Because one day, you're going to wake up in your 30s, and you're going to realize what has happened to me and I'm going to be in my 40s, and I'm going to be looking at you going, 
Haha, I told you so. I won't say that. I might giggle a little bit, but I won't. You, you might think right now that you're Jon Snow. I'm just telling you, dad bod is coming, okay? Dad bod is coming. It's, it's just going to chase you down in your 30s, and it's going to be there. You know, but I, I'm not necessarily satisfied with how I look physically, and uh, the question I really have for us today is, you know, like, how, what do we do about that, right? I mean, what will we do about that? If you went to go ask a nutritionist, you went to go ask a trainer, uh, if you've ever done that, they would tell you it really comes down to two things, right? The first one is this, which is calories in, right? Calories in, which is really kind of like sitting on the couch, right? I mean, this is where most of us consume our calories, right? I mean, most of us sit here. I mean, every night when I put my kids to bed, I like to sit and watch some NCIS with my wife and on the occasion have a chocolate. That's part of the problem. But, <laughs> you know, this is where most of us consume our calories. Maybe it's you, you watch a movie and you eat just tons of popcorn, you know? Uh, that butter popcorn is just amazing sometimes, you know? And you just put it in the microwave and it's there. It's like amazing, right? But I mean, it, it, you, you may experience, you might eat dinner on the couch. Like, this is where most of us would take our calories in. And I mean, wouldn't it be great if you could, like, if you could fix the problem from here, right? I mean, you're comfortable. You could fix the, like, you could calories in your way to a good body, right? Like, you could eat your way to great abs. Like, wouldn't that be amazing, right? The, the, other, the other thing about this is, the other side of this is calories out, really. The, the other side, he would say, hey, well, you've got calories in, but you've also got calories out, you know? You need to be able to pick up a bar, and you need to go do some workouts, you know? You need to do some curls, you need to do some things. Some of you go to CrossFit, you're looking at me going, could you have put some bigger weights on there? <laughs> This is a sermon illustration, people. It's not your workout of the day, okay? It's just, and I'm just telling you now, I can lift a lot more than that, okay? So. But when you go and you work out, when you work out, what's happening is you are kind of calories outing, right? There are some calories that are going out. You can sit on the couch and you can take some calories in, but when you work out, the calories are in fact going out. You're boosting your opportunity to be able to get those calories out. And, and the goal when you're trying to lose weight, when you're trying to move away from the dad bod, when you're just trying to tone maybe, is to make sure that at least what you're working out, the calories that are going out are matching the calories that are going in, or they're exceeding if you're looking to, to, to tone down or you're looking to lose some weight. Your calories that are going out need to be more than what is in fact going in. So if that's how kind of it works, you know, if you're not happy with your physical, I mean, you guys could take that. Hopefully, that's not the first time you've heard that, but... You know, you could take that if you want to tone down and, and, and do some weightlifting or something, then I, I hope that, that helps you a little bit. But what do we do? Here's, here's kind of the question to set up today. What do we do uh, when we don't like the way we look spiritually? What do we do when we don't like the way we look spiritually? Because uh, I, I, know, I know what most of us do. You know, most of us, would, uh, we'd come to church, right, and we, we'd sit in, in the chair, you know, like, oh, man, you know, I just need to attend church more, Right? You know what I need to do? I need to listen to some more sermons. I just need to take some more stuff in, right? I, I, need, to, I need to listen to more podcasts. That's what I need to do. I, I, I need some more calories in, right? I need to read some more books. I, I, I need to do some more devotionals. Because here's what, here's what we're thinking. The more God works in our life, the more God works, the deeper my faith's going to get, right? That's what we think. Hey, if I could just get God to work in my life, then it's going to be great. If I could just sit here and, you know, I just keep taking more stuff in. If God, hey, God, I'm, I'm listening to messages. I'm listening to sermons. Those things are great, remember? I'm listening to worship music. I'm attending church every Sunday. Hey, hey you, if you work in my life, my faith's going to get deeper. Can I just propose to you this morning that perhaps we're getting it backwards? Perhaps we're getting it backwards. Maybe we have the whole thing wrong. If you're here today and, and you're a follower of Jesus, I just want to say to you, the principle we're teaching today was an absolute game changer for me. Uh, I, I've experienced things in my life from a faith point of view just because I've applied this in my life. It, it really has changed my faith and changed my life along the way. If you're here today uh, and you're not a follower of Jesus, I just want to say to you, I think this is the thing that is going to convince you that this whole Christianity thing, that this Jesus thing is real. That, 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 that you... You're actually going to experience something, not just hear about something. You're going to experience something that might just convince you. So to do that, I want to look at something the Apostle Paul wrote. And if you're new to church, Apostle Paul comes onto the scene of history, and not just in the Bible, but you can go read about him elsewhere. And he comes on the scene and he's like, hey, I'm just going to stamp out this religion, this movement of Jesus followers. I'm just going to squash them down. 
And one day he's uh, on the road to Damascus and has this experience with God, and his whole life changes, and he ends up planting churches. And he moves around the whole Mediterranean and goes to all these like colonies, uh, you know, Roman colonies all over the place, and he goes and he plants churches. And he plants those churches, he, he equips them and does some teaching there, then he moves on and he goes somewhere else. And one of the things he does is he, he ends up one day getting arrested and gets put in prison. And he's sitting there and he's going, what can I do? Like, those guys' faith is so important to me. I want to make sure that they're, you know, they're getting what they need as, their, as it relates to their faith. Well, what could I do? So he's sitting in prison. He doesn't just sit there and wait his time out. He decides he's going to write letters. And most of those letters were, were recorded and copied and, and kept for us and, and form part of our New Testament. A lot of those letters are, are involved in there. And in one of them, he's writing to the church in, in Philippi, uh, what was a Roman colony, and uh, he ends up writing about them, hey, here's some things that I think if you want a game plan, if you want a, a, a way to do this, to make sure that, hey, and he relates it to this whole calories in, calories out thing, if you want a game plan to this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how to do that. And so we're going to look at that passage this morning. But uh, one of the things he, he does is he tells you what is on offer for us. Hey, what's the goal? What, what's going to happen if we do this? And so I want to start there, and then, and then I'll, I'll work my way back uh, to, to where we're going. He says this, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. You have been at the beach or at the pool, or you know, you're walking through a mall, and someone shines, like someone stands out to you. If you're sitting next to your partner, you can just say, it's you, babe. Like, but you do, right? You go some places, and you're like, geez, look at that guy, like, well, look at that girl, right? Some people just stand out among the crowd. And, and Paul's saying, hey, if you do this, you're going to stand out. You, you, you're going to shine among everyone else. And really what he does in, in these next couple of verses is he leans into this idea of calories in, calories out, calories in, calories out, and how we do that for our faith. Uh, verse 13, a little a few before this, he says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. How many of you, uh, I mean, the year's short already, but how many of you have felt God working in you this year? Show of hands. That's cool. Hey, right, you, you feel God working, like God's doing something in your life. Maybe you feel like you've been challenged some way. Maybe you feel like you've been pushed in a certain way. Maybe you were listening to a sermon and you're like, how did he know, Right? Did you tell him, like, what I'm going through? Like, how did he know, right? And you're like, man, that applied directly to my life. Maybe you're listening to a song, and, and you haven't been able to find the words to describe what you're experiencing right now. And you're like, man, that, that's it, right? That's, that's what I'm experiencing right now. You put it on repeat, and you play it, and, you know, everyone's listening to that, that song at work. And why do you keep playing that, right? But God's working in you, right? Maybe you've been going through a Bible study, and, and you just can't move past, like, day five, because something in day five is just getting to you. Right? You're just experiencing God in that. It's a devotional, maybe, you, you know, you just really, that devotional is really connecting with you. Maybe it's a book you're reading. Maybe it's a podcast you're listening to. God's working in you, and you can experience that, right? You feel like, man, I, I, I've, been, I've been challenged, I've been encouraged to go in a certain direction. I, I, I need to go that way, right? That's calories in. That's sitting on the couch, getting fed, Right? which is important, it's very important, but we need to add something to that if we're going to experience what Paul's inviting us into. And this passage isn't really about calories in, and here's how I know that. It's this little word over here, for. I told you a couple of weeks ago, if you ever see the word for, you've got to ask what it's there for. And uh, I know this because he, he kind of gives us the motivation for why we are going to do this. Why, why would we want to lean into this? Why would we want to lean into what Paul is asking us to do? In fact, a couple of verses before that, he says this, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Remember, he's writing this from prison. He says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He says, hey, get off the couch. Come do some, come do some weights. Come work out what's going on. Maybe it's a character trait in your life right now, and you feel like, hey, I'm being encouraged to, to make sure I change that, right? Do it. Maybe it's a habit. You're trying to form a new habit at the beginning of the year. Maybe you're trying to break an old habit. Just go and do it. Stop sitting on the couch and reading about it. Go and do it. Maybe you've been encouraged to go love someone. Maybe love someone who would be declared unlovable in our society. Just go and do it. Maybe you need to forgive someone. Maybe someone you need to go and ask for forgiveness. Maybe you need to be generous towards someone. You know, someone you, you just, maybe you need to be generous towards 
a homeless person, someone who's, uh, you know, who you interact with a long time. Maybe you just need to invite someone to come to church. Maybe you need to spend the time investing in a family, investing in someone, and then inviting them to church. Maybe you need to come serve in the parking lot. Maybe you need to serve and get services. Serve as a small group leader in Transit or Wonderland or Upstreet. Maybe you need to start doing a Bible study. He says, hey, get off the couch and let God work. Work out. Come and do something. He says, put your faith into practice, right? Put your faith into practice. We need to be doing stuff. You can't just keep taking in. You've got to be able to do something out as well. Work out what God is working inside of you. In fact, here's the whole verse, that whole, the whole passage together. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you and will, uh, God, God works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. In other words, what Paul is saying is this, hey, we need to work out what God is working in. We need to work out what God is working in. God's working inside of us. He's doing some things inside of us, and we need to work those things out. Why? Well, the same thing is true of you physically as it is spiritually, that if you keep taking calories in and not getting calories out, it's going to be bad for you, right? We need to do the same thing spiritually. There's no point in getting spiritually fat. We need to be able to work that stuff out that we might be able to go deeper. We might be able to go out of the shallows and into the deep end with that. And the truth is, you can't do it from the couch. You can't do it from sitting on the couch. You can't work it out from sitting on the couch. Calories in was really meant to be translated into calories out. And the same is true of your faith. And you would develop spiritual muscles that you have no idea you would have and be able to exercise your, your, um, your spirituality in a way that is, is just leaps and bounds from where you are right now. You see, a, a deep faith... A deep faith is one that is exercised. A deep faith is one that is exercised. You see, some of us, some of us, we're sitting on the couch, right? We're, we're, we're sitting on the couch, and, and we're just collecting experiences, right? We're just, hey, did you see what Andy said? Did you, did you see Andy's new series? Andy Stanley's new series? I mean, it was amazing, right? No, 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 I didn't listen to Andy. You know that guy, Stephen Furtick? Like, he is just incredible right now. I'm listening to everything he's got. Like, no, 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 no. I'm more religious than you. I'm doing Mike Todd right now. Mike Todd is just, I mean, he is knocking it out of the park. He is incredible, right? Maybe you don't want to be so much in Christianity. You want to balance, you know, but I'm having a little bit of Tim Ferriss and a little bit of Jordan Peterson, you know? Finding that's a great blend between the two, you know, in the world, not of the world. Like that, that kind of works, right? Maybe you're doing a Bible study right now, and every time you read that Bible study, you just start crying because it's just, it's God speaking to me right now, right? No, 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 no. I'm reading Jesus Calling, and I play Oceans every time. It's amazing. Some of you may be like, hey, when's that next night of worship? Because I, like, I need to fill up on my worship. Now, if you're here for the first time, that was a lot of insider jargon. I'm sorry, okay? But uh, just stick with me for a bit. But does any of that sound familiar? See some heads nodding, right? Sounds familiar, right? We're all about taking in. We're all about taking in. We're sitting on the couch, and we're taking calories in. See, the problem with that is this, that deep is not a collection of experiences, you know, we feel like we can sit on the couch and we can take all these things in. We're listening to, you know, those four pastors on repeat, you know. Well, I didn't go to church this week. I'm just going to hit the latest podcast. I'm going to watch some YouTube video, right? I'm going to go through, uh, you know, th that list of podcasts that I've, you know, those books that I've got on my nightstand. I'm just going to go through those things, right? We feel like it's a collection of experiences, but deep is not that. Deep is, in fact, a collection of applied experiences. You know, you might go to a two-day Christian conference and you might feel like that's going to lead to a deeper faith. It's not going to. Uh, if you're going to go listen to, like, you know, the greatest worship albums for two days, and, and you think you're going to come out the other side as a worship leader, that's not how it works. I'm just kind of like thinking, well, I'm going to go sit in the, in the garage for two days and become a car, right? That, that's not how it works, right? But if you go to a two-day Christian conference... If you, if you go and you, you listen to, to that worship music, if you go sit in your garage, I don't know why you would do that. This is where the analogy breaks down. But if you would go to those things and, and, and you do something as a result of those moments, if you, if you are changed, if your life is changed, if you, if you go and bless someone else, if their life is changed forever, I'm telling you, it's going to change your faith. If you do something as a result of those experiences, if you apply that experience. 
it's going to change your faith forever. You see, we, we get into this trap where we become experienced collectors, but that's only half of the picture, right? If you sit on the couch the whole time, that's only half of the picture. You can't just keep taking calories in. You've got to actually go and work out what God is working in. You have to go apply it. This is kind of what we're supposed to do. It's really about that word. We really need to go and apply what it is that we are doing. I tell you what, if you're here today and you go and you apply what you're learning in transit, and you, you go become a small group leader in transit, I'll tell you what, your faith is going to get deeper. Your faith is, is, is going to get deeper or you're going to quit because sixth grade boys ask a lot of deep questions, okay? But your faith is going to get challenged. Your faith is going to get deeper along the way. If you were here today and you, you, you haven't invited someone for a while and you went and invested in a family, invested in a person, and you really invested in them, like, you know, you spent a lot of time creating that relational margin that you might need to be able to extend an invitation to them, to be able to say, hey, why don't you come see where I go to church on a Sunday? I'm telling you, your faith is going to get challenged. You're doing something out. Maybe you want to go serve the community. We have some great intersect partners that we partner with, basically nonprofits who we as a church are thinking are doing a great, great job, and we're able to go alongside them. Ladles of love. I tell you, you go serve soup with ladles of love. I'm telling you, you're going to meet some deep people. Your faith is going to be challenged as you go and serve our community. Maybe you're being called out, hey, you need to just conquer a sin. You need to make some tough decisions in your life that, that might be really hard to do, but you know, you've been called to, to go and do that. You need to apply what you're learning. You need to work out what God is working in you. Maybe you need to de deny yourself for the sake of someone else. You need to deny what you want for the sake of someone else. Maybe you want to invite some accountability into your life. You know, you've got a habit you want to break. Maybe you've got a habit you want to start, and, and you want some people to hold you accountable to that. Maybe you want to invite some people in. Maybe you need to ask for, or maybe you need to extend grace to someone. Maybe you just need to receive grace from someone. It's about applying that. Maybe you need to forgive someone. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. It's not about just sitting on the couch and, you know, reading a book about, hey, how to, how to gain friends, how to have a deeper faith. No, we've got to go work out what God is working in. And I'm just telling you, when you work out your faith, you are going to discover that God is faithful. You are going to discover that God is alive. And you're going to discover that God can do anything. Back to Paul. Paul's kind of still building here, and he's moving towards that, hey, we're going to shine like stars moment where we get to experience that. And he says this, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. There's some crazy things going on in our world. I mean, there were some crazy things going on in Paul's world as well. And he says this, here's our line, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life, to the gospel of Jesus. And then maybe my favorite part of this, he says, and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run and I did not labor in vain. And why, why would you think some of that would be in vain? Why, why would you, you know, why is it not going to be in vain? Because do you know that there are a group of people, in fact, there are a whole bunch of people on this planet who are looking for the light that you've discovered in Jesus? There are people who are searching for that light. There, there are people on this planet who, a whole group of them, who are searching for the grace that you and I have received so undeservingly. There's a whole group of people on this planet who are trying to seek compassion from others. And God has given that to you and to me. He lavished that on us. There are a whole group of people on this planet who are hungry for truth, and you and I are clinging to that truth maybe too tightly. See, one of the things we're meant to do is, and, and we're called, Jesus calls us to do this, is we're meant to work out our faith joyfully. We're, we're, meant to, we're meant to be working out our faith and loving people and serving those around us that people would stand up and go, hey, I want to know what they've got. I want to know what that group of people is doing. I want to know what that church is doing. Those people just seem different. They're working out their faith in a different way. Hey, they're working out their faith joyfully. That there's something irresistible that is going on there, and I want to know what's going on there. We need to work out our faith with joy as well, that people would see what following Jesus really is all about. You see, a faith that is exercised shines. It's attractive. People look at it, and, and they're drawn in. When you begin to exercise your faith, people are, are drawn, not only people are drawn in, but you pass it on to those around you as well. 
You pass it on to the people around you. And you and I need to go work out what God is in fact working in. Now, I know most of you in the room, and so I, I want to challenge you a little bit. If you don't know me and you get offended by this, you can come talk to me afterwards. But I want to challenge you a little bit. I want to challenge you to work out your faith. Because I think so, it's so often that we, we sit on the couch, right? And we need to get off the couch. We need to work out what's going on in our faith. Because until you do, until you begin to work out your faith, you are getting in the way of what God wants for your life. Until you get off the couch and you come and work out what God is working in you, you are the barrier to experiencing what God has for you. Because if you just keep sitting on the couch, you're not going to be able to work out what God is working in. And so here are a couple of ways that I, I feel like you could do this. Uh, the first one is serve. Maybe you want to serve. You want to you know, do a Wombaland small group leader. You want to become a transit small group leader. Uh, in fact, if you go to southpoint.site on your mobile browser right now, there's a thing. You can join a team. You can sign up right now, and we, we'll get co- back in contact with you this week about what those options are. I'd love for you to attend next. It happens on the first Sunday of every month. We want to help you discover purpose. And we want to help you make a difference. It's a great opportunity to be able to find a way that you can serve here at South Point Church. We love our teams. We love our, uh, our service teams. They really are a great place to get to know people, but also be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. Another thing you could do is this. You could invite someone to church. Some of you haven't done that in a very long time. You need to invest relationally in a, in a couple, maybe in a group of people. Maybe you just run into someone. Hey, why don't you come sit with me this Sunday? Or why don't you come to church with me this Sunday? Maybe you need to invite someone to come to church. Maybe you need to share something that you're learning. You're doing a Bible study right now. You're doing a devotional. Maybe you want to gather a group of people at work and just share what you're learning. Just share something that, that is going on uh, in your life. Another one, maybe you want to just be kind and generous towards someone. You want to be kind and generous towards someone. Maybe you kind of feel like that's on your heart, you know, like you've been experiencing something with someone and you want to be kind and you want to be generous towards someone. Maybe that's something you want to do right now. Maybe that's what God is calling you out of the shallows into. Last one is uh, maybe you want to read and listen with action. This, this is certainly not exhaustive, by the way, but maybe you want to read and listen with action. Mark Batterson says an amazing thing. He says, hey, before you go and read the next chapter in the Bible, you need to decide what you're going to do with the last one you read. Like maybe before you go and read, you know, the next chapter of the Bible, what are you going to do with that last one? Maybe before you go read the next book, decide, hey, what am, what am I going to do with what I've just read? I'm going to apply that with action. Maybe before I go listen to that next podcast, what am I going to do with what I've heard? Well, how am I going to apply this in my life? You know, I, I gather that most of you are, you know, on, on, on the internet, maybe you're reading a book right now. I think that most of us have read something that we could apply somewhere in our lives. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's a book. We, we've all experienced something. We've gotten some calories in that we, were able, we would be able to apply in our lives. And if you've been challenged in an area of your life, I just want to say to you, go change it. Get off the couch and go work out what God is working in you. Because I just want to say to you, those of us who are followers of Jesus, you have all the power and you have all the freedom And you have all the grace to go and do exactly what God wants you to do. All you have to do is go and unleash it. You have to get off the couch and go work out what God is working in. And I want to be perfectly clear here. I'm not asking you to turn down the couch. Okay, I'm not asking you to turn down the couch. Because some of those things are really good things. We need to be getting calories in if we're going to go work out. But I'd rather that we matched what we're getting in, what we're exerting out with action, the things that we're able to do. How many of you know this guy? Dwayne The Rock Johnson. How many of you remember him from wrestling? Yeah, he was amazing, wasn't he? Do you know that he consumes 5,000 calories in a day? The average four-year-old is about 1,500 calories. If you want to lose weight, the goal is 1,000 calories. He's 5,000 calories a day. How, How many of you know this guy? Michael Phelps? Do you know that at the peak of his training, he was consuming 12,000 calories? And I just want to say this to you. I want that for you as well, from a spiritual point of view. <laughs> I want you to be consuming so many calories from God and then be spending that many calories on his work in the world. I want you to be consuming that many calories from God as you're getting that many calories in but you were also working out what God is working into 
you as well, that you are matching, hey, I'm getting that amount in, I'm getting that amount out as well. The same, you know, it, it, it works the same in, in, in your physical body as it does when it comes to your spirituality. Calories in has to match the calories out. And this is not an either or. You can't choose the couch or to work out. Some of you have tried to fast and work out at the same time. Not a great idea, right? It's a both and. Yes, we've got to sit on the couch and we've got to take that stuff in. But we've also got to work out. We have to go and work out what God is in fact working in. How, how many of you have heard the term earning your calories? You heard that someone's around you. Hey, I went for a 5K. Now I can eat that piece of pizza, right? Hey, I ran for a 5K. I can eat that donut. So my question for you in closing is this. Are you earning your calories? Are you earning your calories? What you're getting in, are you working that out as well? And I don't bring that up to, to make you feel guilty. I bring that up to show you the possibility of what is possible, what God is calling you into. I just want you to imagine the spiritual depths that you might be able to go to if you were able to do this. If you were able to match, if you were able to earn the calories. That which is coming in, we're not just getting spiritually fat, but we are actually working those things out in the world. I would say to you, it's not going to only impact you, it's going to impact the other people around you. Because there are people walking around you every single day who are carrying burdens, and you can help them carry that burden. There, there are people around you every single day that you could stand in the gap of where they are and where they want to be. You can help them navigate that. There are, there are people around you every single day who, who need some light. They're dealing with depression and anxiety. You could be the light for them in that experience. Some of you could, can help people break down walls, break free from chains that they've had for years. You could be the answer to someone's prayer. You could provide something for them. You could you help them with uh, you know, some, maybe moving through something and getting over something. They would experience victory on the other side of what they're dealing with. I and mean, that's deep stuff, right? That's really, really deep stuff. Stuff. And if you're here today and you're kind of like a new Christian, you're that novice, uh, you know, you, you, you're kind of, hey, I want to grow, I want to grow, but I don't feel like I'm qualified. God has called unqualified people for generations. Some of my greatest steps in my faith was when I just simply said yes. I had no business saying yes to. I just said yes to an invitation, and God took me from the shallow end to the deep end. If you're sitting here this morning, you may be a veteran, you may be stuck in a bit of a rut. Hey, I'm going to invite you, get back in the game. You know what I mean by that? Get off the couch and come and join. Come maybe serve. Come maybe invite. Maybe get connected in a group again. We need you. And not only do we need you, you need you as well. Because you are the barrier to what God has in store for you in the depths. And he's calling you out of the shallows. Don't just sit on the couch. Get back in the game and let this year be the best year you have ever experienced. If you're here today and you're not a follower of Jesus, you're not a Christian, if you want to get a taste, you kind of want to do a trial run, you, you want to test that this thing really does work, that this thing's real, I just want to ask you, hey, would you go and give your life away to someone? Would you go and serve them? Would you go and love someone? And Jesus comes along and he, he says to, to us and reminds us that, hey, I, I, I'm not, one of the things that's going to define Christianity is that, that you're not going to go to church. You're not going to listen to sermons. But you're going to love other people as I have loved you. And then he went to the cross and he died. He sacrificed himself for you and for me. And he calls us to do the same thing. And I'm just telling you, if you go and love someone in the name of Jesus, whether you're a Christian or not, you will discover that it's the most compelling thing on this planet. And it might just convince you that this thing is actually real. And in closing, I just want to say this. If Jesus was here today... If Jesus was, was here standing on stage and he was coming to train us, I mean, we'd all run to the front, right? I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go. What are you going to want us to do, right? What do you want us to do? I'm ready. And Jesus would say, part of the problem is you're here because you need to be out there. You, 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 you can't just keep taking stuff in. You need to be working out what God is working in you. We, we would go and sit on the couch, right? And we'd say, Jesus, give us, what, give us what we need to do. Give us what we need to do. No, 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 no. Get off the couch. Go and work out what God is working in you. Go out there and work out. I think Jesus would say to you, Jesus would say to me, hey, I'm inviting you into the depths. And when you get onto the other side of that, man, I can't wait for you to be there. I can't wait for you to experience that because that is going to be amazing. So as a church, 
as a group of individuals getting together, as we go through our week, hey, would you commit, would you say yes to working out what God is working in you? Because matching those two things up is going to lead to us moving from the shallows into the deep end and experience a much richer, much deeper faith. Work out what God is working in. Let me pray for us. Father God, I just want to thank you for your son. Thank you that uh, he showed us a way to live that is completely counterintuitive to many of us, that we, he came to serve, that he came to love each of us, that he came to really live sacrificially. And Father God, may we, may we lean in that direction, that uh, as people look at us and people see us interacting, as we working out there in the world, Father God, that may see a part of your son. They might see something that's authentic, but Father God, also irresistible. That's a, it's attractive. Father, we might not be able to have that conversation, but would you give us the words in that moment to have that conversation with someone, invite them to church. Father God, I want to pray for the person here today. You're calling them out of the shallows. You're calling all of us out of the shallows, but you've given us an idea. You've given us a way to go. You've given us a direction. Father God, would you give us the courage to go out and do those things? It's no point just sitting and, and, and knowing what to do. We need to go and do it. So Father God, would you give us the wisdom to know what to do? Would you give us the courage to go out and do those things? Father God, thank you for sending your son for each of us. In his name we pray. Amen.